Thank you for showing interest in this subject. I hope to do it justice and answer some questions if you happen to have specific questions. On a gloomy day in southern Spain, we are cooped up indoors, so I'm going to do my best with lighting, avoiding shadows to get through the point of why is my growth so small. In the quest of every orchid grower, we attribute a size jump in new growths as getting it right. And we aim for new growths to be bigger than the previous one or ones. When we have achieved that, we can pat ourselves on the back and consider it a successful growing season for said orchid, or even better, for several orchids. But what if that is not the outcome? Then we ask ourselves, what went wrong? Was it something that I did? The heads up to answer that question is what I will be talking about today. In and amongst these beautiful creatures that you see in front of you are examples of why is my growth so small. So what I'm going to do now is go find them and go through the reasons in case you've been asking yourself the same question with some orchids in your collection. I'm going to do a little bit of a shuffle, get those candidates out and we'll go through them one by one. The first reason, divisions. Your orchid can be a specimen, you are dividing it, and then the orchid pretty much has to get used to the idea that not as many storage organs are around anymore. So after a division, usually the next growth will be a little bit smaller. That doesn't necessarily mean it is always the case, but it's definitely a reason should you have a division and afterwards the new growth comes out smaller. And that includes divisions that are rootless, and that you're trying to propagate from the back end. Small growth, clear example of why this little growth is so small. Nothing to worry about. As long as there's roots coming into the pot, it is not a problem. And every new growth, despite the size, will produce new roots. Smaller growths will also happen after an orchid has been set back. Many times when we get a new orchid in, we put it into the setup that we find will work best. Turns out that the setup did not work out very well. The orchid deteriorates, but there's still life in it, so we attempt a different setup. Meanwhile, the orchid has been set back, needs to get itself reset, so to speak, and that is why we say set back, and the subsequent new growths will then be also much, much smaller. This is my Hawaiara lava burst. She was in Lekka and self-watering and I got the ratio of the Lekka wrong with her fine roots and almost lost her. I mounted her and now her little growths are much, much smaller, but at least they produce roots. The next reason a new growth could be smaller is because the orchid is acclimating. Not just because you've got the orchid in new to your collection and it is acclimating to your environment, but an entire setup change can also be a reason that an orchid produces a smaller growth while in your collection. Any kind of acclimating takes a lot of energy for an orchid, so for the new growth to be produced, that is also energy, getting used to your environment, getting used to a new setup, energy, energy, energy consumption of the highest order, and it can produce smaller growths. This is my Paphiopedalum gratrixianum, gifted to me by Fernanda Nathimento orchids and succulents in a peacock style setup just to keep her upright. And she is doing really, really well considering but acclimating, and for that reason, the growth is developing a little bit reduced in size. Still, I'm getting new roots, which is amazing. She came with one root, and now she's got two or three. Pest on your orchid, especially if it is an eye that has been attacked, will also result in smaller growth, if not addressed very, very quickly. And when I say pest, I include anything that wants to take my orchid out, including fungus, mold, and in my case here with my Nanipua Kea Dogashima, Fusarium. So in rescue mode, any subsequent new growths will be very, very small. If the orchid makes it, but in the case of Fusarium, that is an if. However, if it was scale or mealybugs, the orchid will produce another growth, a little bit stunted, but the growth will come. So avoiding pests, watching the rhizome, watching the growth points, the eyes, very, very important to secure a sizable new growth as one is accustomed to with the orchid. 
but the main contributing factor would be a fusarium orchid that is in recovery. The next growth will not match previous growths. And then we have the classic example of the loss of roots. This is my Dendrobium gyrac horn. And once again, because of a mistake in the setup, getting the Leca ratio wrong for the needs of this orchid, she lost all her roots. And I had to start from scratch. And for that reason, Dendrobiums being very, very vigorous and being able to bounce back, so to speak, her new growth is much smaller because she was drawing from the reserves of the back canes. Has her own root system now, so we are good to go for the coming growth. Which segues right into not enough fertilizer will also make your growth not grow as big as the previous one. This is my little fairy. And here you can see two growths that are pretty much the same size. So this was 2020's growth. This was 2021's growth. And this orchid also had a complete loss of its root system due to my mistake in how much water it needed. And they all just collapsed. And for that reason, same as with my gyrac horn, this growth had to provide a brand new root system for the entire orchid drawing strength from the previous growths. And now the lack of fertilizer in the following season resulted in a similar size growth because I did not want to risk the roots that were in this pot. I needed the orchid to get another growth so that she can grow another set of roots. And now I shall be applying a lot more fertilizer to bring her back to the size of growth that she is capable of. So a lack of fertilizer will take care of that as well but sometimes it is necessary to back off on the fertilizer to secure the health of the root system before then going in with the normal strength. On my Dendrobium hibiki, I am going to show you that when new growths grow in adverse conditions, speak during the winter when the temperatures aren't cooler. But in this case, you have a year round grower, doesn't stop when it finishes growth, it blooms and then starts new growth no matter the time of year. It doesn't necessarily have a season. So there will come a time where new growths will grow during the winter months that are not ideal in the preference of this orchid regarding temperature and day length. And then suddenly you get new growths that are gonna be much, much smaller than previous growths. I would say that is just the nature of the game and that is not a problem. If you were to add more fertilizer in this case, you would just be taxing the orchid more because she can only do so much given the environment that she's currently developing her growths in. So taking into consideration climate, the environment, what time of year is it and when this orchid is growing new growths, the growth may be a little bit stunted but will still produce roots and add to the storage organ and overall vigor of the orchid. If you get the setup entirely wrong, then you will also be incurring stress on your orchid and even the leaves can come out smaller than the previous leaves. Once that mistake is recognized, it is time to change the setup and try something else to bring the orchid back to its normal vigor. These are two of my Neos. I've got Goja Fukurine on the left and Set Suzanne on the right. I'm still trying to figure out how I want to incorporate the growing of neos in inorganic media. To some degree it's working, but they could be much, much vigorous, which is very obvious to see here with my set Susan. So think of the setup, look at the orchid, check how the growths are going. Even if it's just a single fan orchid, check how the span of the leaves are working out. And it's possible that the setup is totally wrong, needs to be tweaked for the orchid to get back to its normal vigor. We can't do a video like this without stating the obvious. <laughs> if it's a miniature orchid, it's going to have a small growth. End of. But of course, by comparison to the previous growth, we can still get kind of a judgment whether we're getting the culture right. Still, I thought it was so cute. I want to show you my little Lelia Blumenshiny Eye and how she is starting to go bigger <laughs> than the single bulb that she propagated herself off of. Isn't that remarkable? I just had to throw this in there. But yeah, miniature orchids, they also have a standard of growth size that you can determine and compare to previous ones. But if they're small, it's because they're miniature. Completely wrong environment and conditions will definitely show you if you've got those wrong. A healthy orchid, even though she will grow for you, will never ever get the same growths 
as if she were in a very, very happy climate and environment, and she will continuously produce small growths in comparison to what she is really capable of if she were in her happy place. This is Lelia Perinii. I've had her for many, many years, and well, you can see that subsequently from when I got the orchid, the growths have been getting smaller and smaller. That is not because my culture is wrong per se. It is because my environment is not to her liking for most of the year. So knowing the orchid, knowing what it likes and it prefers, trying to tweak that as best as possible will then result in bigger growth. If that doesn't happen or kick in, the orchid will still grow. She will still bloom, but she will just not produce the growth that she is capable of. That may be frustrating to some. There is no way of compensating that with more fertilizer without incurring additional salts in the pot. It is just something to recognize and accept. And if it's something that is difficult to accept, then maybe the orchid can be given to someone else that has the conditions to get her to grow the size of growth that she is capable of. This will not be the case for my Lelia perinii, not in my conditions. Lack of hydration, the obvious one as well. If we don't give our orchids enough water, then of course pseudobulbs will shrivel up. Energy is being drawn out of the pseudobulbs. There's not enough energy for the new growth to actually grow to size. Now that might seem very, very obvious, water your orchid more, but we already had a point that we discussed when the orchid hasn't got any roots why add water to the pot? But if you've got a healthy root system and you forget to water and you have a new growth or growths growing, know that you need to water that orchid. Otherwise, she will only be drawing the energy from any storage organs she has in the back of her, resulting in smaller growths. And one last point I want to bring to your attention is that repotting is a stressful situation for an orchid. And depending on the vigor of the orchid, it is possible that the stress induced via the repotting will result in a smaller growth as well. Sometimes we have to get into our pots, needs must, media is breaking down, and many other reasons why the perfect timing that we strive for when new roots grow is not always possible. Intervention to give the orchid a new start and a fresh start doesn't always match with new root growth. So the storage organs will help the orchid produce a new growth, but because of the stress of repotting, if the timing wasn't 100% correct, the new growth will be a little bit more stunted. And it's just something to be aware of when you go to repot an orchid and you may not have new roots growing, but the circumstances require it at that point in time. In all of this, I just want to say one thing, there's a common denominator. Whether the new growth grows as big as the previous growth or smaller, it will always produce roots. And that is the most important thing to know in all of this that I have just mentioned. Eventually, the orchid will bounce back and then the orchid will recover from all these stress factors and the next growth will then start to grow back to normal size. So I really hope that this was helpful, that it answered a question. If you were in doubt whether it was you or any of the reasons I've just mentioned as to why your new growth or growths are so small. And if you have any to add to this list, feel free to use the comments and add to the list. Anybody watching this video that goes to the comments for additional information is going to benefit from that. And I want to say thank you very much in advance for doing so. I also want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And once again, from a gloomy southern Spain, <laughs> hopefully next time we see each other, I can be outside. Have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition, please, that you stay safe and take care. Bye.